You made this. I made this. I made this. With the news this week, let's start the recap by going over some leaks about AMD's new AM5 socket. Thanks to the reliable leaker known as Executable Fix, we have an idea of the next-gen socket. One of the biggest changes is the transition from PGA-type socket, where the CPU has the pins, to an LGA socket, which is what Intel is using right now. Specifically, we're looking at the LGA 1718 socket. While I do understand the transition, I'll miss the pins being on the CPU. I mean, after all, the pins were much more durable while on the CPU compared to LGA sockets, and it was a lot easier to clean as well. But with this change, it would keep AMD from having to deal with as many pin RMAs and other such things. But going back to the topic on hand, the new AM5 socket will also support dual-channel DDR5 memory, and if RAM manufacturers are anything to go by, we'll see speeds from 4800 MHz up to 10,000 MHz. PCIe 4.0 will also be supported, being powered by the new 600 series chipset. As for the pairing to go along with the AM5 socket, AMD's new 6000 series will do perfectly. Having the Warhol design cancelled and moving straight into Raphael was the right move to make. With this transition in socket being paired with a CPU that can also support its features should make a great leap in performance, especially with 5 nanometer designs. Remember though, this is all speculation, so make sure to subscribe to ensure you are informed when everything is finally confirmed. Hopefully, scalpers and miners are not as big of an issue with those releases in the future. While on the topic of miners though, they will seem to have some trouble with Nvidia soon enough. This is because Nvidia has announced they are reducing the hash rates on newly manufactured 3080s, 3070s, and 3060 Ti's. I cannot be happier about this, but knowing the mining community, it will only be a matter of time before this is bypassed. Even then, it will still deter the average miner and should hopefully free up some cards for the rest of us. With this update, Nvidia will also be putting stickers on their boxes and cards signifying the light hash rates. Online retail listings will also be updated to support this move. Nice. One interesting thing to note is how this update will not come to the 3090. The $1500 card is amazing when it comes to hash rates as one would expect, and when combined with other cards dropping in that performance area, demand is going to be even higher. And I don't think we'll see a day where the 3090 comes even close to its $1,500 MSRP price tag. Taking this all in and looking at the currently crashing crypto market, this is going to be another massive blow for cryptocurrencies as a whole. It is going to be interesting to see what the market looks like in a year from now though. But you know what's happening right now? Some groundbreaking finds when it comes to manufacturing sub-nanometer chips. These published findings were made by TSMC, the National University of Taiwan, and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. But it is important to note that TSMC, while being partnered with these groups, would not necessarily use these findings in their manufacturing process, especially with TSMC already in the research into this exact field. To be honest though, I think they'll use these findings one day, but let's take a look at the paper itself. The main focus is to improve transistor contact, which provides power to transistors. The issue lies with the power delivery facing higher and higher resistances as everything has been getting smaller, limiting performance. Currently, TSMC uses tungsten for their interconnects, and Intel uses cobalt. With this new process, bismuth, a semi-metal, will be used for the contacts, greatly reducing the resistance compared to other materials used. To go along with this breakthrough, a new helium ion beam lithography method was designed. To clarify, all this new tech is still in the experimental phase, so don't expect any mass-produced nanometer chips to hit the market anytime soon. But it is amazing to see that technology exists to get us there. As for something a little bit more concrete, Google has announced their first permanent retail store. You can imagine this to be similar to how an Apple store works, but with Google products. Pixel phones, Nest, and other Google goodies will be on display and for sale. It even has a section dedicated to tech support with a workshop and repair station. But looking back at Google's history, this is not their first venture into this area. The first plan was back in 2010 and actually was a fleet of container ships that were planned to be used as a mobile showroom. But this was shut down due to fire safety concerns. As for the second, Google leased a building in 2015 and spent money renovating the place, but dropped the project out of nowhere. Finally, Google announced plans to open up a store, but dropped it while they were sorting out the leasing agreement. 
Google's track history with this idea has not been pretty, or rather with any project, but this time around it may work, especially since they are planning for this store to be in the heart of their Manhattan campus. Best of luck Google. And with that, that's going to do it for this week's tech related salt. Make sure to like the video, subscribe for more tech content, and hit that notification bell. Follow us on Twitter at tech underscore four underscore thought. And if video games are more your thing, check out our affiliate, cultureofgaming.com, for all the latest gaming news, reviews, and opinion pieces. See you next time.